Adam Savage of Mythbusters says he used to uh, do a lot of this stuff as a uh, as a kid. He was always building stuff. All right, then we get that into here. Oops, wrong, wrong direction. Just snapping that joint. So there goes that. Nope, it's not right. Huh. This really, this really ah. is an 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 interesting exercise in visual spatial yeah. skill and exactly dexterity. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's what that means. And interpretation. <laughs> yeah, and and just getting a feel for what they're actually what is actually here. C fifteen. Now, just. Oh, very nice. Coming together? Yeah. A little torso there. Now, just a little while ago, we started watching the original Mobile Suit Gundam. So what were your sort of overall thoughts on that? Well, uh, unlike some anime, it seemed pretty serious-based. Yeah. Uh, it was... Uh, there, there, the, the moments of humor were, were more real-life humor rather mm. than contrived... Yeah. And uh, the 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 storyline took over uh, yeah. immediately and so there's quite a bit of depth to it with that more realistic approach. Mm -hmm. Of course with all sci-fi there's a certain amount of getting into the story and mm -hmm. the background. Yeah. Of course you have to say okay yeah there's <laughs> spaceships and this is the scenario and that's set up in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And it seems that they, they as far as sci-fi, they are dealing with uh, issues on a pretty good basis. Mm -hmm. There's points where they do have gravity and points where they don't have gravity. Mm -hmm. It's not just taken for granted that there's yeah. gravity in space. They even have issues with it at some points. <laughs> yeah. Um, it even becomes sort of a, uh, a, a tactic. Is you take out uh, gravity and then that becomes a problem for people in the ship. As they have to flail around without gravity. <laughs> Sometimes I flail around, right, yeah. <laughs> even with gravity. <laughs> exactly. Uh, okay, B. The Gundam was the, um, it's generally considered to be the first Gundam series to, well, the, 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 I'm sorry, it's considered to be the first mecha series to really treat mecha as a serious topic. There's certainly been, been serious science fiction anime before that, um, like Star Blazers, mm -hmm. uh, Space Battleship Yamato, um, and uh, Captain Harlock and, and such things. Mm -hmm. But this is the first giant robot show to really take that more science fictional, sort of Larry Niven, uh, Asimov kind of, a, of an approach mm -hmm. to such things. Now, now you use the term mecha. Mm -hmm. uh, how did that develop and what's that stand for? Yeah. What's that really mean? So mecha stands, for, so mecha is a term for, I did this in the wrong order. Um, <laughs> That's not what yeah. it stands for. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, maybe I didn't. Maybe I didn't. Yeah, I did. Okay, that's fine. Um, so mecha. Well, it's, it's actually a very uh, interesting point. Mecha in Japanese technically just means mechanism. Mechanism. Um, hmm. So um, any uh, mechanism is mecha. So a car is oh. mecha, um, technically speaking. Over time, uh, because. Well, the first mecha series, uh, anime series, was called Gigantor, or Tetrajun 28. Gigantor. Gigantor. And that was a definitely a, a big thing. People were, were um, it was hugely, hugely popular. Oops, sorry about that. Um, hey, lightsabers. Hey, Chris. Um, yep, we're, we're building on uh, Gundam model kits. <laughs> um, Join us. <laughs> um, nail clippers are good for taking the nubs off. Good to know. Nail yeah. clippers like that idea. Um, nice and portable too. Exactly, and, and multitasker. It's <laughs> and it's got the file on it. You can. Yeah, true. Mm -hmm. No, some of them do. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so um, um, uh, so it goes back to Gigantor's the first mecha anime series, mm. and because th these shows had these big mechanical um, um, machines in them, they were called mecha series because that was kind of the giant machine, giant, giant mechanism, machine, right? Mm. And so Mecha and it sort of became a synonym for giant robot. But even in Japan, you hear people talk about being a Mecha designer on a show that has no giant robots because they're designing um, powered armor suits or they're designing ships or whatever. Hmm. Uh, which generally speaking, if you hear Mecha, you think giant robot. <laughs> That's what come, came to mind for me. Exactly. 
But, uh, yeah, it's it's uh, quite um, quite the thing. Actually, Sunrise, the studio that made Gundam, was formed explicitly um, to specialize in making mecha anime series. These are so profitable. Really? Yeah, they're so. Is that popular? Um, well, not just popular, profitable. Both. Uh, the, yeah, <laughs> the, the, the the toy companies make so much money off of them that it was very easy. It's very easy to um, uh, to get people to to fi finance them. So it made a lot of sense for them to say, "Hey, we're going to do these really well. So work with us because we will get we'll make that like a series really, really effectively." Hmm. Um, sort of like a sponsor to get the story off the ground. Exactly, and you know, almost all anime series are, are made that way, where there are various companies sponsoring the production of that show. Um, but with Sunrise, they said, let's get a toy company first and foremost. Uh, we'll design all these giant robots and, you know. So not just a there. sponsor, but it's part of the story. Exactly. And then they can work with the, the, um, that toy company to say, okay, um, you know, how many different toys are, can you manufacture? How many should we put into the show? That kind of stuff. Hmm. So you can actually be fairly... Um, Specific and detailed about these things. Ah, so now we're putting in D5. That's exciting. So, yes, yeah, so Sunrise actually w was founded as a essentially a mecha uh, anime studio. And that's one of the reasons why, if you watch um, Sunrise series, often the giant robots are animated more cleanly and more beautifully than the human characters are. <laughs> uh, I think that's just what they specialized in. That's what they're good at. Where's B? Now, Where's B? There's B. B5. Oh, looks Where's like B5? I pulled out. Pull I see that I, it's a good idea to keep track of whether you're on A, B, or C, because yes. the same number, if you pull it off of a different <laughs> one, is not the same oh, no. part. <laughs> so I have uh, pulled, off a, part too pulled early. off a part too early. Oh. A5. Ah, I am assembling A7. No, B5. Bingo! <laughs> it be that. It says B5, A4, A4. A4. Ah, there we go. Oh boy, this is a tough one. Mm. Tough one. So this is um, already requiring a decal, which is very, very small. So I got to decide how I'm going to do that because I'm not going to be very good at that. Decal application. Well, we do have a magnifying glass. That's true. Um, yeah, they want to closer. Unfortunately, we can't really zoom in very close on that on, on the live stream. But we are recording this from multiple angles, so in the in the final episode, you will see close-ups of all of this stuff. Hopefully, yes. Yeah, so I've got these two little bits right here, and it looks like I've um, got mm -hmm. something similar. Oh wow! To, yeah. So and, I, and they want me to put a label on one of these. Whoa, that's but, tricky. So that's going to be interesting. Definitely a magnifying glass for that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I'm encountering something similar. Uh, yeah, the eyes. So they only put the eyes on on the Gundam. Um, I can. I'll give it a try. No. Okay. So I've got number four. Now, every time I try to do this, it ends up not being correct. But I'm gonna try. Excuse me. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Me to come in here again. You guys will be able to see this better on the on the final video. Um, I'm gonna. Oh, actually, yeah, we have a thing for this. One second. There we go. It's over here. I'm gonna put the part on this thing if I can. There we go. And so I'm going to put the Gundam's eyes right there. There we go. Nice placement. Thank you. The only reason I can do this is because I've got it clamped down. Otherwise, this would be a complete mess. There we go. So then we pop this little bit on. Where does that go? It goes in the, ah, there's the, the bottom of the there we go. So there's the uh, the mouth with the eyes. Good. Wow. All right. Very detailed work. Yeah. I wish I bought these this thing years ago. 
<laughs> Having a good magnifying glass seems yeah. seems to be very useful. Mm -hmm. Now I have oh, I need another one too. Wow, okay. I have one um, coming up as well, but it looks a little so different. On E8. So yeah, Gundam's a very uh, serious show. You said the humor is much more in the little bits and moments um, as opposed to ha ha ha. Real life humor rather yeah. than uh, a contrived or mm -hmm. entertainment style humor. Right. You also notice there's been no fan service so far. No fan service, no. Yeah, that will change. But <laughs> Eventually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Even that's pretty minor. They're also equal opportunity fan service, which is kind of refreshing. Now this has an exclamation yeah. point. Ah, e where do you see that? Over here. Ah, yeah. Now the symbols that they have in mm -hmm. the instructions include some, some that make sense, like yeah. times two, and some that make me think, caution, yeah. hey, pay attention <laughs> to this, like That's the exclamation point. That's probably a reminder to um, make sure it's oriented the right way. Because mm. um, that, that, those parts are only going to fit in one direction. Uh -huh. Just make sure you've got it um, oriented correctly. And you should be good to go. Hmm. Right, so there goes well, this could that. be very specific. These things look really weird when they're, I mean, uh, <laughs> it's a Gundam head. It's very, very strange. Um, then I need E5 for the other half. There it is. CB. Gundam Bill Fighter special episode. Yeah. Well, he's doing a, a unicorn Gundam. So, uh, yeah, I, I I wish we could do what we did in Gundam Build Leaders, where we actually battle with these things. Let's see if that there we go shot is yep. uh, somewhat Banshee clear. Norn. <laughs> unicorn Banshee Norm. Norn. One day you'll you'll watch that series. Hmm. You need to watch your own giant robot in action. Imagine that. Giant robot action. <laughs> okay. No. Um. That, oh, and then, and then again, we get another uh, decal on this one. So we're going to put the little light on its head. Hmm. Let's see here. Oh, it's coming in. Oh, oh, oh. There we go. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to clip this again. What I might do. P19. I'm going to grab this. I'm sure. Thanks. So I've got my extra piece yeah. here. Mm -hmm. my built piece here and the one I'm working on there. Cool. And I have E19. Oh. I'm going to hold this by the... How am I going to hold this? D. There's really no mm. good way to hold it. I might just... Hmm. Piece of tape? The head. <laughs> yeah, I might do that. Um, e. Ah, that's a break that way. That might break it. E19. That's actually okay, I think. Hope it doesn't snap. <laughs> All right. And so we're putting in label 12 or decal 12. I'm calling them labels for some reason. Hmm. Uh, oh. Wow. That is tiny. That is absurdly tiny. Again, if I were doing this as a like professional or a, a serious modeler, I'd spray paint in this. Little, oh, and it tore in half. Dang it. Ah, the decals, the yeah. tricky, tricky parts this of the decals. may not end up. Yeah. I don't know how I'm going to do this. At that point, we get the single hair paintbrush <laughs> and get yeah. the magnifying glass out. Yeah, and... that is, in fact, the, the decal just dropped. Oh, there it is. It's now on the edge of, oh, no. Okay, the decal just dis uh, dis disintegrated. So I'm going to have no decal there. So that may be something I'm going to spray paint later. I will. That, that'll be a, a job to uh, experiment with, with with that. Such is life. With a lot of model kits, mm -hmm. there's the opportunity of just doing it out of the box or mm -hmm. customizing it or yeah. uh, getting more detail in by uh, doing refined painting besides mm -hmm. what's in the box. Mm -hmm. So... I wonder, is that is that a common practice to paint before or after? Um, generally speaking, you're going to paint before. 